Peace to the world. Alright, so you. Do you like your new brother? Ah! This is a 20% chance of snow. Yeah, right? Hey guys. Hey guys. How's it going? Happy Tuesday, or maybe Wednesday, depending on whenever we decide to post this video. It's a beautiful, but very chilly and snowy day outside. And we are all snuggled up and cozy inside. A lot of that is thanks to Mac Weldon for sponsoring this video, because they're keeping us super comfy and cozy today. Look at these comfy pants. Cozy, cozy. Look how comfy my pants are. We are going to talk a little bit about a, a question that we get asked a lot both in our comments and I guess just in our life and um, something you guys have asked us. The question is, what is it like for us being an LGBT family living in a, in a small town, in a very rural, rural, I have a hard time saying that word. Area. Rural. Area. Area. Being from a small town here in Colorado, uh, I can appreciate what that, like that, that curiosity is for those um, uh, asking. So we're gonna talk about it. Yeah, I guess because I grew up in a city. You grew up in a big in, city. In a big yeah. city. And even though the like, gay wasn't talked about that much when I was a kid, it still was, I don't know, I guess I was, big cities, it's not as. Uh, well, it's a lot more diverse. There's a lot more people. There's a lot more. Thank you. Yeah. It's easier to just kind of go about your way and not really worry about too much about what's going on you if you're in the store or something. Whereas you're here and you're down at the local you know, shop and go. You know, it, Two dudes with a kid that's yelling, Daddy, Dada, Daddy, Dada. It's a lot more noticeable. I really s started thinking about this question a lot recently when I was around one of the, another like one of Crow's classmates' parents and we were uh, talking about, something came up about one of the other kids and I was like, you know that other kid from Crow's class? And she's like, yes, I know most all the kids from kindergarten. And she's like, trust me, give it a year. You'll know every kid at the school and you'll know every kid's parents and you'll know their story and you'll know everything. And it hit me that, whoa, I do live in a small town. It's a small community and you see the people around a lot and you're like, I don't know. So it, it just made me, it was, a, I guess, a real eye opener that holy cow, like these people are will very soon all know who we are and what our story are, our story is, especially because we live already, like we live a pretty public open life. All it takes is a quick Google search and you find out so much about us. Whereas in a big city, it's easier to kind of like get lost in the shuffle. Or there are times we're out and about, whatever, and you get like the sideways glance or something, you know, you're down at the, you know, a restaurant downtown. And it's a little bit unusual, I think, for this area. We were at Crow's soccer practice and, um, we walked in and this woman recognizes Matt and because I guess a uh, celebrity chef all right all right had right, just right. been re all right all right we don't need to go into all of this they get the point but we do need to take a second to talk about our sponsor and uh sponsor introduce them to the wonderful world of Mac Weldon I'm about these socks though right but those socks are mine you, we went through and picked out a bunch of stuff and you picked out all your stuff and these you socks were like, are mine he says <laughs> So this is what marriage is. <laughs> Mac Weldon is all about simple design, premium fabrics, and easy shopping. Their website is super easy to use. It kept him busy for 45 minutes. <laughs> Literally everything on that website yeah, I would have I don't know at all. Well, because it, it's so easy because they're all just really well designed basics. And good colors. Yeah, the colors are really great. You know, sometimes you, when you order something and you have an idea of what it's gonna be and you get it and you're super disappointed, all of this is exactly, and if not better. But we got ourselves some uh, some thermal underwear. Well, I got some boxers. I also got this other pair of boxers. Too much booty in the pants. Ooh, Dance. Yeah. Ooh. Look at these. All right, all right, all right, all right. All right. <laughs> They've even got a silver line, which is all anti, how do you say? Uh, mac, micro, I looked it up. Uh, anti macro ma Anti ma no microbiome. Anti mac macrobiome. Ma mac you want to ask Siri? Anti yeah, ask Siri. Where's my phone? I was being sarcastic. I don't want to ask Siri. She's irritating. How do you say anti microbiome? Here's what I found on the web for how do you say anti metro probably. <laughs> <laughs> this is not it at all. Antimicrobial. Antimicrobial. But essentially, it means that it wicks away odor, so it keeps you smelling fresh throughout the day. Mac Weldon wants you to be comfortable, so 
Even if you try on your first pair and you're not happy with it, you get to keep it anyway. These are the most comfortable socks you will ever wear. Ah! For everyday wear, the gym, dates, running errands, everything. Like they dates. got you covered. Yeah, but. When baby. was the last time you went on a date? No, because you don't take me on dates. We want to thank Mac Weldon for sponsoring this video and supporting our channel. Mac Weldon is offering 20% off to our subscribers if you go to MacWeldon.com and use promo code MattBlue. At checkout, you get 20% off your first order. So thank you, Mac Weldon, for supporting our channel and for making such comfy, beautiful clothing. Good morning. Look at it, he's just standing out here. He was in there in his in his stall, eating his hay. Hey, watch the toes. He just keeps... <laughs> it's like he has to be close to you, so he bumps you. I was talking to a farrier with, with Nelson to talk about uh, the shoeing and everything. And while I was on the phone, I had mentioned uh, our son, whatever, in conversation about this horse being gentle and it's good around the kid. And the farrier kept referring to my wife, my wife, my wife. At one point, I felt it necessary to kind of be like, yeah, okay, look, I don't have a wife. I have a husband. But I do think it's important, like Matt said, when he and I were talking, uh, to kind of set the record straight because not that you're a bit like, ah, 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 but more so for the fact of like it's 2019 and nobody should ever have to you know kind of remain back in the shadows just say and you should say it proud yeah i think even beyond being proud i think it's important for yourself to to correct them but i think also for the sake of continuing to normalize it and be, to be able to continue to sort of open other people's minds that might not otherwise yeah. be exposed to it so often and for them to be able to go whoa like i've just been i've been connecting to this person he seems totally normal he's not trying to hit on me he's not some like sexual pervert or whatever to like to normalize it and then sit and to make people see that it's, like that we can happy. relate as like as humans and, and yeah. that we're not dip we're not necessarily different i expected to come into this town and get more looks and more of a reaction. So many times when I sort of correct you, oh, actually I have a husband, or I just say, oh, I, if I'm telling a story and I re refer to my husband, I receive very little sort of reaction to it. That being said, we do live in Colorado, and even though we live in a more conservative red county, we still live in a, for the most part, a more liberal, or especially at least socially liberal state. Like that goes back to the, when we went to Mount Rushmore and we were in uh, South Dakota. South Dakota. Um, it was, I, I felt like we got a lot of looks there. And I feel there like if we moved to a state like that, we would have a very different reaction. I think that was the most uncomfortable elevator ride I've ever been in. I think in, in general, life. that was the yeah. most, I feel like I've ever, the most I've ever felt sort of uh, aware. Think of the circumstances. I mean, we were together and we were with our son. Part of that feeling, your awareness was also like your like protection, your your defense, your Absolutely. you know your in your mind to be like, yo, these people are not down with us, and we have our kid with us. You definitely have a different uh, instinctual need to protect when we are as a family out and about. Going back to what you said before about having to you know, to reach that point in the conversation where you set the record straight, like I have a husband, and this whole, you know, 10 minute conversation before that they never even thought about it. And then they realize that, okay, this dude's gay. There is a, like a preset, preconceived idea of what gay is to a lot, like a 70 year old cowboy farrier yeah. in, you know, the Rocky Mountains. My conversation with that man ended up going into him asking what my dad did, him asking about my son. We talked about, aliens and global warming and you all this connected crazy. as humans yeah. and the, the fact that but, you were gay did not and i think that doesn't. part partially was because i was able to be who i was and not have to dance around parts of the conversation that might expose the fact that i had a husband everybody can't do that you know we are fortunate for i mean we're in colorado we're in america there's so many places in the world that people can't do that but i still think to the extent that you can Everybody should. Before we left Denver, we were considering moving to Nashville. And na, 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 Nashville. that was a, a huge concern for us being in the South. Nashville is a very, like, industry, te like, uh, entertainment industry dominated city. So, of course, by 
by default, it's a very, it's a much more, I think, like open-minded and socially liberal town. But you go not far from there, and especially where we were looking at places, it wasn't like deep in, or it wasn't even far from the actual city of Nashville, but far enough that it was just, we were very aware of what it was going to be like to be a gay family living in the South and what it was going to be like for our son going to school and having two dads show up to pick him up. The concern for him is, like, is he going to get teased? Is he going to get bullied? Like, what is two dads going to going to be to him? So, you know, for for that sake of the matter, it's always important to keep that conversation up with him. We talk about it with him now. That all being said, that was we were not going to let that stop us from moving to Nashville. No. We were very, like, aware of it and protective of our son and the situ situation. But we were not going to let it stop us from living our life. Okay. Had the cards unfolded that way, we would have still moved there. But we would have been, on a daily basis, much more aware of. Yeah. I think. I mean, we didn't move there. I, no, I mean, I also, like, right. we have friends who are a gay couple with kids, and they're living in Nashville, and they love their life there. So I think a lot of it just depends on sort are of, like... Are they in Nashville itself? But they're or? actually in Nashville. Yeah. I do think, though... It is a sign that we are coming a long way as a society. Like, we will soon be... Yeah. Go ahead, I don't mean to cut I you don't off. know, I'm just saying, like, I think we're coming a long way. I know that there's, especially in different parts of the country, and definitely, definitely in different parts of the world, there's a lot of just, like, awful things happening. I mean, you, you look at, like, Chechnya and Russia right now, but anyway, we won't get into that. We all kind of have to live our truth, because there are a lot of people who want to repress us, and, so, like, look at the transgender band! Yeah, it's definitely not a time to be you know, content and to be comfortable. Not at all. It is a time to, more than ever, continue to be open and out and public and out outspoken. I don't... Um, to, to make sure that we don't get to a place where uh, we are being suppressed again. We have a lot to be thankful for. And I think that for any of you that are out there living in a small town, and it's not like that for you. When I was a kid living in Colorado, it wasn't like that for me either. It took me yeah. moving away for 20 years and building a, a confidence and getting to know myself. If you feel repressed in a small town, it's okay. You just gotta look at your resources and see how you can change it. Share your experiences with us. I'm curious, and most of you do, uh, like pretty regularly in our comments, you share your experiences being gay and where you live. We would hear, like to hear your stories about what it's like where you live. Continue to be strong and be brave like you do all the time. Continue to inspire us as you do every week on our videos and our comments and every day in our comments on our Instagram and Twitter and we just, we're very inspired by you guys, and so we want to thank you and for allowing us to be who we are and to be honest and truthful with you guys every week. It means a lot to us. I love when I see a comment and there's multiple, multiple replies to it. Yeah, and that's all of you guys supporting each other and commenting I each other. It. I feel like that's the biggest reward for doing what we do. Always support each other. Look at them out there in the snow. All three of them. It is cold. They're crazy. It starts snowing. He just comes outside. Carlos, you have a new brother? How have your mornings been? Nothing. Pretty pleasant. Besides the occasional face butt. <laughs>